Unfortunately, I'm gonna be doing the clutch and head gaskets in my 2006 Legacy GT, and I'm gonna pull the engine for that, obviously. And so today we're gonna be doing a step-by-step -step on how to remove the engine. Now, I will have separate videos for the head gaskets and for the clutch, but I figured it's probably better for the community if I make individual videos. So today, I'm gonna to do my best to give you the best step-by-step -step video on how to remove an EJ25. Let's get to it. Okay, so we have the car up in the air. We have it up pretty high because we're probably gonna to have to go underneath to undo some of the transmission bolts, um, but it's probably not gonna remain this high for the whole engine removal. But with it up in the air, the first thing that we're gonna do is drain the engine oil and the coolant. Yeah. Now, uh, even though this is the first thing we've done, I think it's time for a break and let this stuff drain. All right, I think we'll put this drain plug back in and then we'll drain the coolant. The peacock is, it's a plastic Phillips screw on the bottom. And I'm sure it's gonna make an absolute mess. Motherfucker! And now we wait. And increase the flow. Oh god! No! Oh crap. Now that's a healthy stream. Can you make up your damn mind? Nice, healthy stream. And then, once it's done draining, we get to clean up our mess. Let's make another mess, shall we? Now let's disconnect the lower radiator hose. See how much coolant comes out of that. I'm sure it'll be freaking super. Well, you're definitely not going back on. Cover, cover your eyes, kids. Whew. That made a big splash, but it was not as bad as I was expecting. There's a 10 millimeter bolt on a ground strap right here on the engine. You can either disconnect it from the engine or the frame. I'm disconnecting it from the engine. And there she is. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna come up to the top of the vehicle now and continue to let that lower radiator hose drip and drip and drip. Now we're gonna disconnect the air intake from the engine. Disconnect these coolant hoses and make another mess. And there's just going to be another mess. Oh, a little mess. Not too bad. Do the upper hose now. We're gonna remove both the AC compressor and the power steering pump from the engine. We're gonna leave them hanging instead of disconnecting the lines and making a bigger mess.
There's another 14 millimeter bolt behind the compressor. It's extremely difficult to see, but I promise it's there. Bagging and tagging. I highly recommend doing this when pulling an engine or doing any big project with a car. Get yourself some plastic bags and label them. This will really help out when reinstalling everything. And videotaping really helps out too. Undo this connector right here on the power steering pump. Like, there's two 12 millimeter bolts on the bottom of this power steering pump. There are a total of three bolts holding this on. Now you can just set this aside. Okay, we're gonna disconnect the fuel lines now. If you're smart, you would have taken out the fuel pump fuse and cranked the engine to lose your fuel pressure. I was not that smart, and I can't do it now because there's no oil. So I'm just gonna be cautious of all the fuel that might come out. And we're gonna be using this fuel line removal tool it's possible to remove these without it. However, I have not had any luck removing them without this tool. But this tool makes it super easy. Just a little bit of fuel. And that's why I have cardboard down there. And then this little guy. Now I'm just gonna spray some electrical parts cleaner in there to clean up all that gas. Best way to clean up chemicals is more chemicals. Scientifically proven by uh, the people. All right, we're over on the passenger side now. We're gonna disconnect the main harness and the oxygen sensor. We've unbolted this bracket that the main harness connects to from the body. Now we're going to remove the other harnesses that go to it. So it's the only way I can figure out how to remove the body harness is with this bracket. Can't figure out how to remove the body harness from the bracket. I'm sure I did this the wrong way, but now the body harness main connector is free. We're going to move on to getting off this intercooler. I'm gonna put a small rag in the turbo and a bag over the inlet 
just to make sure nothing gets in there while everything's out. Always wear protection. Remove this connector. There's two hoses right next to the clutch master cylinder that go into the heater core. Those need to be removed. And while you're back here removing hoses, you can do the brake booster. Whew, that was difficult. Okay, now we're gonna unbolt the downpipe from the turbo. There are five fasteners on this downpipe. Some are a bit tricky to get to though. Um, can't really show them on camera, they're really hard to see. So on this turbo, there's three bolts and two nuts. I'm on the final nut, and to get to it, I'm using a wobble extension and a 14. Downpipe's kind of in the way. And this is kind of in the way too. So we need to loosen the nuts on these studs so we can loosen up the turbo. We don't need to remove the turbo, we just need to loosen it to get it over the transmission. And then, once we loosen this, we can move on to the bell housing. We have the downpipe disconnected now, and we have the turbo loosened. We shouldn't have to remove it, leaving it loose like that should just be fine. And now we're gonna move on to the bell housing bolts which shouldn't be too hard. Apologize, it's super hard to film down here, but there's two more nuts I need to get, one under each axle. Now we're going to move on to the two engine mounts. Driver's side one is right there, it's a 14. And the same thing for the passenger side. It's right there. On to the passenger side mount. And voila! One thing we're gonna do is disconnect this. That's just connect this pitch stop now. <laughs> the video is professional up until now. <laughs> so disconnect this. Are you, gonna, are you gonna put an LS in it? Yes. So what are we actually gonna get done today, Mike? Uh, I think all we're gonna, gonna do is remove this bolt and then we're done. We're done. How did I know you're gonna try to uh, vandalize my butt? Add some other interesting. Wow. 
The last thing we're gonna remove from this car before we pull the engine is the radiator. It'll give us a lot more room for when we pull the engine. It's coming apart, but I, oh, it came apart. Awesome. Okay, you got it? Yeah. So it's this thing, and the tab is actually on the other side. There's a little tab on the left right there on the outside. The other one was the same. So you press that tab down, and then it comes apart. Oh, well, at least I broke it and made it easier. Thanks for helping. So much room for activities. <laughs> Success. Can we, oh, dude, we have to get in there. When okay. The, when the motor's out, we gotta like get in there and close the hood and like pop out. <laughs> okay. So to pull this engine out, we're actually gonna reinstall this uh, AC compressor bracket because there's a little hook right there. We're gonna hook our ratchet strap to here and the hook on the back of the engine. So we're gonna reinstall the bolts for this bad boy. Your engine's pulled. Yeah, if, once you install that, your engine will lift itself out. You don't need a crane or a hoist because sewer engines are designed once the perfect conditions are met, they lift out like the magic carpet. Okay, so if you're watching this video to figure out where to mount your engine hoist, like, uh, like I was looking for, which I found no information, we attached our load leveler to what appears to be a hook on the back of the engine with a 12 millimeter bolt and big ass nuts as washers and also on this bracket right up here. So now we have it connected. We're not using the plastic intake manifold. I know a lot of STI guys use the intake manifold because it's metal or aluminum, but you can't with this because you'll probably break it. So now we can hook up the crane. Okay, so we actually jacked up the transmission a little bit with some wood just to support a little bit, and now we're ready to pull the engine. I also did jack up the transmission. Oh, oh, oh we're touching stuff. Oh, there she goes. Now actually what has to happen here is when you do that. Ready? The turbo might also be causing issues too. That might have to wiggle around the transmission. Yep, yep, you're out, you're out. Mike, you forgot a fucking vacuum line. Stop what you're doing. You go tear a line. Wait, floor it? Oh, that's good. Good, keep going. Let me film that vacuum line. Right here. This is the most detailed EJ25 video ever made. Oh We're pulling an engine. So we will film it. Exactly. This vacuum line? This line. Went here. There. Ugh, right there. Good. Good. It. Car's done? Done. All right. Why do you hate me? Why do you? Why? What? 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 First it was the elevator and now it's this. Turn it on! God. All right, hang on. Ready? All right, so we finally got the engine out. It was a little bit tricky getting it off those super long studs on the bottom, but obviously it is out. Um, hopefully this video helped you out. When I was looking to do this, I was looking for a detailed video on it and couldn't really find anything, so. Hopefully, hopefully this video helps you out if you're trying to move your EJ25. It's probably gonna be a very similar process to every Subaru engine, um, except for the SCI that has like a pin in the transmission that this car does not have, so make sure you remove that. How many people to pull it? How many would you recommend for people? You should cover tools, but how many people to do the job? Uh, for first timers, at least two, at least. Hmm. I mean, we had three people here. There's four people here now, but three people helped with it. I mean, an experienced super guy can do it by himself, but for a first timer, definitely you want a friend at least. Um, so yeah, engine's out. Now it's time for me to rip the clutch and flywheel off and put it on the end stand for the next video. So hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed it. Peace.